good time. I'm talking about benign and malignant tumors of vulva. Before I want to discuss vulval anatomy, external genitalia include monus pubis, clitoris, labia majora and minora, perineum, vestibule, and hymen. Perineum is a less hairy skin and subcutaneous tissue area lying between the vaginal orifice and anus and covering the perineal body. It is length is about 2 to 5 cm or more. The urethra open onto it, while vestibule, a forecourt or a hole next to the entrance. It is at the area of the screen of the smooth skin lying within the labia minora and in front of the vaginal orifice. Penile vulval disorder a significant issue for patients. These disorders include vulval atrophy, benign tumor, hematoma, and cyst. Infectious disorder and non neoplastic epithelial disorder. Infectious disorder include diseases caused by the viruses, bacteria, fungi, and protozoa. The vulval tumor may require multidisciplinary approach by various specialties, including dermatologists, gynecologists, pathologists, and oncologists. Vulval atrophy may be related to advanced age or other disorder, but these abnormalities often represent an almost physiological finding in the elderly. Benign tumors of the vulva are relatively uncommon and may show non-specific clinical features. Biopsy is often needed to exclude a malignant neoplasm and to indicate proper treatment. Non-neoplastic epithelial disorder includes several inflammatory ulcerative blistering disorder as well as a pigmentary changes. One type we have papilloma is a warty sessile growth arises most usually from labia majora. Human papilloma subtypes are the causes and it's a type of sexually transmitted disease. Another benign lesion we have Hyder adenoma. The Hyder adenoma is a rare, small, benign valvular tumor that originates from the apocrine sweat gland of the inner surface of the labia majora and nearby perineum. Another type of a benign vulval lumps we have fibromas are the most common benign solid tumors of the vulva and occur in all age group and commonly found in a labia majora. They actually arises from deeper connective tissue. Thus, they should be considered as, as dermatofibromas. Another types of benign we have lipomas are benign, slow growing, circumscribed tumor of the fast cell arising from the subcutaneous tissue of the vulva. Uh, they are the second most frequent benign vulval mesenchymal tumor because of the fast distribution of the vulva. Most lipoma as are discovered in the labia majora and are superficial in location. Their malignant potential is extremely low. We have now non neoplastic epithelial disorder. We have lichen sclerosis, which is common comprises 70% of benign epithelial disorder, lead to epithelial thinning, inflammation, histological changes in the dermis. There will be squamous cell hyperplasia, benign epithelial thickening, and hyperkeratosis. It appears at, as a thickened, elevated white patch in the skin and complicated by fissuring and ulceration. Generally, all the lesions present as vulval thinning and inflammation, moist lesion. There will be itching, pain, burning, dyspareunia, vulval, uh, sorry, vaginal soreness, fissure, bleeding, ulceration. Treatment of these need emollient, so lubrication is important, topical steroid, and oral antihistamine. Now we are uh, talking about pre-invasive lesion like vulvar intraepithelial neoplasia. It is a cellular abnormality limited to the epithelium of the vulvar skin, excluding the keratinized layer. We can classify into VIN 1, 2, and 3. 1. There will be mild dysplasia with hyperplastic vulval dystrophy and mild atypia limited to the basal layer. While 
Type 2, moderate dysplasia, hyperplastic bulbal dystrophy, and moderate atypia, limited to the one-third of the bulbal epithelium and basal and intermediate layer. While the third type, there will be severe dysplasia, hyperplastic bulbal dystrophy with sphere atypia seen in the entire thickness of the bulb. It replaces the term carcinoma in situ and uh, Bounds disease. Its incidence increase because of increase of the awareness, early detection, and increased mean age of human. Approximately is found about 70 years old. The causes may be due to chronic bulbar irritation, immunosuppressive condition, uh, human uh, papillomavirus infection, um, HIV, smoking, sexually transmitted disease, and we have maybe dystrophies, poor nutrition, poor hygiene, and local moisture are also contributing factors. 50% of the VIN cases have sequential or concomitant neoplasia in the lower genital tract. It, uh, the lesions are reported in young women less than 40 years old, and obesity, diabetes, chronic fluoride, and dermatitis are often uh, linked to this disease. Human papilloma virus DNA detection combined with cytology improves the detection test to 95%. Bulk clinical feature may be asymptomatic for a long time. Or present eye prurites is common symptom, usually being treated as a fungal infection in early cases. Prurites, scratch, and secondary infection sometimes seen. Uh, sometimes there will be soreness, dysuria, dyspareunia develop, and maybe pre-existing leukoplakia, condylomata, condyloma, and dystrophy may show white, red, flat, or papular lesion single and multiple. We have multiple widespread lesions are more common in a young woman, some develop pigmentation. The purpose of management, first, to relieve symptoms of prurites and soreness, the second, to prevent development of invasive cancer, the third, to avoid uh, mutilating surgery and sexual dysfunction in young women. Radical valvectomy causes disfigurement and dyspareunia. Diagnosis need colposcopy with biopsy and uh, treatment of this disease. In a type 1 and 2, need just observation. In type 3, local excision or laser pulverization needed. And sometimes we need topical immunomodulator like imicute cream. Need follow up because there will be uh, increased incidence of recurrence, which is 20 to 30 percent. 5 to 10 progress to invasive cancer in 8 to 10 years. And regular follow-up need at 6 to 12 months interval. Now we, ca we are coming to another topic, Paget disease. A rare extra mammary disease, apocrine sweat gland are involved, slightly elevated, sharply demarcated, white indurated eczematous lesion found in a postmenopausal woman presented with prurites. Biopsy reveals typical large pale vacuolated cell in epidermis. These Paget disease are adenocarcinomatous mucus creaking round cells with vesicular nucleus and pale cytoplasm. Local excision of valvectomy, if no underlying cancer is present, with underlying lesion case is treated as invasive carcinoma. Radiotherapy, local or systemic chemotherapy, like bleomycin and 5-fluorouracil are also tried. The tumor recur in 20% of cases. Now we are coming to another pre-invasive lesion. Varicose carcinoma. Most commonly found in oral cavity, but may be found on any moist membrane composed of squamous epithelium. There is no association with human papilloma virus infection. Usually occur in postmenopausal women and they are slowly growing, but locally destructive lesions. Even bone may be invaded. Metastasis to regional lymph node is rare. 
the treatment of the Barakas carcinoma. Radical local excision is a basic treatment. Palpably suspicious grown nodes should be evaluated with fine needle aspiration for cytological testing or excisional biopsy. Vulval intraepithelial neoplasia or invasive tumor cell carcinoma may be seen in association with this tumor. Radiation therapy is contraindicated as it may induce anaplastic transformation for subsequent regional understand metastasis. We are coming to vulval carcinoma. It's uncommon with an incidence of four cases per 100,000 monoids. It accounts for 2 to 5 percent of cancer of the female genital tract. It is the worst, most common cancer, common in elderly postmenopausal women, especially in 6 to 7 decades, mean age 65 years old in 60 percent, while in 50 percent less than 40 years old. Tumor of the vulva generally are divided into human papilloma virus associated, usually in younger patients. And we have non-human papilloma virus association, usually in older patients, which are associated with vulval intraepithelial neoplasia and lichen sclerosis. The pathology of the vulval cancer, we have primary tumor. The primary tumor, mostly squamous cell carcinoma. Second, we have melanoma, 2 to 5 percent. Third, basal cell carcinoma. 2%, sarcoma, less than 1%, Bartholin cancer, which is rare. Secondary tumor, it occasionally found in the vulva, which is um, commonly the primary lesion is from the cervix, endometrium, or ovary. The pathophysiology of vulval carcinoma, the lymphatic drainage of the vulva and the lower third of the vagina is to the inguinal and femoral lymph node, and this is the first place to which the tumor metastasis. Beyond this, the tumor can spread up lymphatic chain and finally to the liver and lungs at a late stage, which is rare. The risk factor, we have viral factor by detection of antigen induced by a herpes simplex virus 2 or type 16 to 18 human papilloma virus, especially in young patients. Precancer changes, dysplasia like a VIN, lichen sclerosis, Paget disease. Heavy cigarette smoking, immunosuppressed women, example transplant patient, and HIV. Clinically present as uh, irritation or pruritite in 70% of cases, or at the mass or ulcer in 55% of cases. Bleeding in 28%, discharge in 2 to 3%. The picture is uh, obvious. There will be typical appearance of the vulval cancer is of a raised ulcer with rolled edge. We see leukoplatic or dystrophic area may also be present, maybe single or multiple foci. Two-thirds of cases lesion involve the anterior part of the vulva, mainly labia majora, and one-third other part of the clitoris, perineum, labia minora, and forchitis. Ulcerative lesions bleed and offensively, offensively smell. Pain is a late feature when nerves are infiltrated. Inguinal lymph node may be palpable in more than 50% of cases. Urethral, rectal, or vaginal symptoms may be present when direct spread to them occur in 25% percent of cases. About diagnosis, need proper history and clinical examination for lymph node uh, examination and per rectum examination. Investigation need punch or excision biopsy. We need cystoscopy, proctoscopy, x-ray of the chest and lung bones and PET of PET CT and MRI for lymph nodes metastasis, lymphangiography superior to CT and MRI, and lymphocytography, which is 100% detection rate. This is the FIGO staging of the vulval cancer. We have four stages. 
in stage 1a confined to the vulva and or perineum 2 cm or less maximum diameter groin node not palpable stromal invasion no greater than 1 mm stage 1b as for 1a but stromal invasion less than 1 mm while stage 2 confined to vulva and or perineum more than 2 cm maximum diameter groin nodes also not palpable Stage 3, extend beyond the vulva, vagina, lower urethra or anus, or unilateral regional lymph node metastasis. Stage 4, we have A, involve the mucosa of the rectum or bladder, upper urethra or pelvic bone, and or bilateral regional lymph node metastasis. Stage 4B, any distant metastasis include pelvic nodes. The 5-year survival rate for stage 1, 93%, for stage 2, 80%, for stage 3, 35%, for stage 4, 10%. For prognostic factor for vulval carcinoma, if it is large, more than 4 facade team and it's primary tumor, depth of the invasion is important, most important to predicting lymph node involvement. If it is 1 to 2 million, so there will be 8% risk. If it is 3 to 5 million, 30% risk. Location of the tumor is important. If it is central, it is worse than the lateral due to bilateral lymph node spread. Sphenicter involvement, direct spread, metastasis to the groins and the age. So in the old age, it's a bad prognosis. Treatment of the vulval cancer. For stage 1 and 2, radical local excision with a 1 cm disease-free margin. Stage 3 and 4. According to the general health, the chemotherapy, uh, we use cisplatin and 5 fluorouracil and or radiotherapy to shrink the tumor to permit surgery, which may preserve the urethra and anal sphenicter function. Radical valvectomy plus lymph node uh, in wine and lymph node dissection. Another, we have reconstructive surgery with skin grafts or myocutaneous flaps for healing. The sentinel lymph node procedure may replace groin node dissection in the future where the sentinel lymph node is the first lymph node to be involved with the metastasis, is identified and removed. So no need to remove all lymph nodes, just the involved one. If this node is negative, the patient is followed up. If positive, positive radiotherapy is given. Thank you for your listening.